Hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so we had some big technical issues. <laughs> we tried to use a new software and it just, it didn't work at all. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> here we are. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> frustrating beyond knowing. So, <laughs> like, I get to see the screen, but I can't actually get into it. And when I try to go into it, it makes me start a whole new one. It was, it was a mess. So, iPad it is. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, welcome to you guys. I want to just give you a quick update while we're waiting for more people to arrive. Hi, Jeff. And um, that is to say that... We are planning on getting back into the van and heading back to the boat officially starting this Next Wednesday week. or Thursday. Yeah. It's going to be either Wednesday or Thursday for sure. Uh, Spain is opening up. It's uh, small businesses are back and we know there's probably going to be a resurgence of the virus, but at least we can get back in before that happens and be safe and sound on the boat. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, shall we get into it? Yes. But well, first... Maddie has a little intro for you guys. <laughs> we have to make this official. Yes, so we had a nice slideshow and everything for you guys, but instead what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hold my computer up. I hope, well, yeah, yeah. that's not gonna work very yeah. well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Morning, window oh, or water, window good to again. see you. <laughs> so. so, all right, well, we want to, well, what we're going to be doing today is talking about the our 10 favorite anchorages that we've had all the way from Baltimore to Southern Spain. And to start off, we just want to talk a little bit about what makes a really good anchorage. Uh, the criteria we came up with are, I think, pretty much universal, and I think you'll agree with most of them. Uh, but the first thing is a good holding. I think that's probably the most obvious. Yes, like we want <laughs> sand or mud. We do not want rock. We don't want kelp. Yeah, none of that weird stuff. Yeah, anything where you can um, uh, drag is not optimal. So good holding. Uh, protected from the wind and the swell and the swell that's right yeah because she gets seasick so just because the boat's stationary doesn't mean she's not throwing up everywhere <laughs> <laughs> marvelous <Yes. laughs> uh, so the ultimate um, uh, the ultimate anchorage for protection would be like a C shape uh, in the lee of the wind or actually the ultimate would be something that's isolated that you have to like go in and like travel through to get in there because yeah. Then it's, you have wind protection from all directions and you have swell protection. Yeah, and a lot of these, a lot, oh my gosh, a lot of these anchorages we're going to tell you about uh, are, are like that. Um, and then we've got uniform depth. Yeah, so the last thing you want is the anchor on like a little hill in the middle of deep water. And if your anchor drags, it just falls into the water. It's just, you're gone. You're just <laughs> drifting away. So having a uniform depth means that if, if you drag, you drag from one point where you have the proper amount of scope to the next point where you have the proper amount of scope. You don't run issues of right. running out. Right. And scope is big for us. Yes. <laughs> Since we're so heavy. So ideally, we like between 10 and 20 feet of depth because we mm -hmm. draw six and a half. So if it's 10 feet deep, we have like, you know, four feet under us. That's right. It's comfortable. Yeah. Uh, which brings sure. us to the fact that the tides are very important as well. Yeah. So a place where the tide changes, if it's a small change, then, you know, you don't have to count that much in scope. Like it's going to be, you put out your chain and you're pretty good from there until high tide. When it's a crazy tidal change, mm -hmm. it's complicated. Uh, pause. Zamboni, I believe. Just said hi from Clarksville, Maryland, which oh, is exciting. Cool. <laughs> That's where uh, Herbie's practice is in, yeah. in Maryland. Oh, it's uh, Bezzy. Oh, Bezzy hey. Be. <laughs> hey, Bezzy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we must know this person. Um, yes. Okay. So we need uh, the tide and current to be nice and optimal. Yes. Uh, not high. <laughs> not too much tide. Not yes. too much current. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, shore access, 
is very important too. Uh, you need to be able to, like there are a lot of great anchorages that you you anchor there and then you can't actually get to shore on your dinghy because there's a big seawall or... Or just you're in the middle of nowhere yeah <laughs> there's no shore to get to yeah and uh also it's good to have access to things like groceries maybe a little town a couple restaurants um for provisioning and stuff yeah. and then uh we've got swing room yeah so this goes along with the tidal issue so if you have a crazy high tide like say it's a 10 foot tide that means that you need an extra 70 feet for high tide yeah. Which means that at low tide, your chain's like 70 feet too long and you're swinging all over the place. So you need a lot of space. So that way when you swing, you don't hit rocks or sea walls or, or shoals. Or other boats. Or other boats. Yep. Yep. We've had That's a thing. close encounters with people who anchored too close to us before. Yeah. And then uh, crowdedness goes yeah. with swing room. Like you can have lots of swing room, but if everyone's crammed in there, then... Yeah. So ideally you yeah. want an anchorage that has a lot of room and isn't very crowded. And that's actually hard to come by because the best anchorages everybody knows about. And yeah, so they and do end up there. getting pretty crowded. And then you have to worry about hitting other people and other people kind of not doing the right things because there are always those novice boaters out there that uh, aren't quite up on the anchoring. And you never know. Yeah. If you ever hear someone yell out, I'm going to park here. <laughs> it's not good. Get your fenders ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Shall we begin? Yes, yes. So our number one anchorage. Number one. Is West Palm. And oh, wait. Uh, mm. Oh, yeah, there we that's, go. That's, that's ah, good. there's yeah. us. So that's West Palm. Uh, in West Palm Beach. Yes, West Palm Beach, Florida. This is in the ICW. And ah, it works. <laughs> okay, so the anchorage is our favorite anchorage. You can see there's boats everywhere. But if you anchor between these two piers, it's actually huge. Like mm -hmm. we let out about 200 and some feet of chain and there wasn't an issue. And the great part is you don't need a motor for your dinghy. So then you don't have to worry about someone stealing your motor while you're on shore. So there's a really strong current, which isn't so great, but it's either going this way or this way. So literally when you let go from your boat, you just drift into the pier. <laughs> and then when so, you leave on the next tide to go home, it's back in. You will swing a lot. Um, that's one thing you'll find anywhere in the ICW <laughs> pretty yeah, much. Lots of current. There's a lot of current. Um, but this was especially ideal because the city of West Palm is uh, incredibly accessible. And right here. It's right here. And there's a free bus that'll pick you up at the pier. And take you to Publix, which, which is, is a really good grocery the store. The grocery store, yeah. And next to Publix is a movie theater. <laughs> so you have everything you could need. You have the groceries, the free transportation, the movie theater, the restaurants, the nightlife. Uh, the one thing is that West Palm Beach is incredibly expensive. <laughs> yeah, but you so, can anchor for free and the dock is free. Yes. So. Yeah, once you get on shore, it gets expensive. But this was a fantastic anchorage. We spent... A long time there because it's where we waited for both crossing to the Bahamas and crossing the Atlantic. Yep. And well, West Palm Beach is pretty expensive. The movie theater was pretty cheap, and Publix <laughs> is really inexpensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. It's a so, great place. We highly recommend it. Now, oh, mm. there we oh, are. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, uniform depth, it's between nine to 11 feet deep everywhere in there. So, you don't have to worry about, you know, Tons of chain out and all these issues. It's it's really nice. So, number two. Number two is Harness, Harness Creek. <laughs> now, we didn't go far from home to find this one. This one's yeah. actually in Annapolis area, South River. Yeah. So, it's just, it's beautiful. You have trees. You have nice water. It's a little on the deeper side. I think it's the best anchorage in the Chesapeake. Yeah, it's really nice. And there's the water is actually a lot cleaner than most places in the bay, especially most places in that area of the bay. And it's it's quite nice. So. You can go swimming, and there's a beautiful park. Uh, you just dinghy right up to shore, uh, beach your dinghy, and there's a really lovely park through the forest and along the water. Yes, and as you can see, there's lots of people that come. <laughs> Lots of jet skiers though, and they kind of like screwed around all over the place. So if you go on the weekend, you're it's, it's gonna get really crowded. But people there are generally extremely good at anchoring pretty far from you. Like we've never had troubles with people anchoring too close. Yeah. People do tend to raft up a lot. Yeah, it's big parties. Now, 
So Mark said... ICW, where you ended up laying on your side. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about that one in Worst Anchorages, which, which is coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> so the this one, it's... a. Uh, the nice thing, a lot of people that anchor there that kind of fill up the anchorage are these really small boats. So they go really close to shore where it's really shallow and sailboats can't go anyway. And then the best part is they leave at sunset. Mm -hmm. So then at night you can re-anchor in like the best spot and then tomorrow, hmm, it's beautiful. And we kind of have our favorite little spot there where we can easily get Morty to shore. <laughs> yeah, so this is a uh, nice Google map view. And you can see it's like this is South River and it's just this little guy that comes in and it goes way far up. But honestly, I have it's backwards on that screen. So <laughs> I've never gone past right here. Like we just go in and stop and that's it. And we anchor in this like big area, which you can see here, nice uniform <laughs> depth. And it's the perfect shape for perfectly protected anchorage. Yeah, so you're really protected in there. Mm -hmm. And the Chesapeake Bay actually is very difficult. Um, a lot of sailors say it's the most one of the most difficult places to sail in the world. And people do come all from all over to sail the Chesapeake. Yeah. And so, in all honesty, I think the reason it's so difficult is because there's so many shoals and the water is so murky that you'll never see the shoals. So you're literally just sailing along, having a great time, and then you stop. There's also the squalls. Oh, yeah, the squalls are bad. Squalls it's bad. like uh, it's a lot like the med, uh, where you'll have very choppy water um, with small waves, but they come really fast and they're very close together. And then these squalls come out of nowhere, fifteen mm -hmm. minutes hell, and then you're fine again. Yep. <laughs> so our place number three is. Would you like to say it? Okay. Bermuda, but it's a very specific place in Bermuda. Yeah, so Bermuda's a we are. <laughs> big archipelago. Yes. And the, I just look at the water. It's beautiful. It's like <laughs> clear blue This is rainbows. <laughs> this is such a picturesque anchorage. And uh, it's ideal because, <laughs> because A, it's just so beautiful. And B, there was fantastic holding. We were there for four days. We never worried at all about drifting away yeah. uh, or dragging anchor. And it's in St. George's. Did so I say it's that right? the, yes. So it's the most northern part of Bermuda. Mm -hmm. So Bermuda is actually hundreds of tiny little islands, as you can see: one island, two island, three island, four island, five island, six island. And <laughs> so this is called Towns Cut. It's super narrow. It's, it's literally, really hard to get through there. Yeah. I will say we actually. I'm sorry to interrupt. No worries. Um, <laughs> should well, we actually had to get. Um, hey, John. Hi, John. <laughs> uh, we had to get uh, towed in because the weather was extremely bad when we arrived. It was like really bad, and we were nervous about. Uh, it was town, dark. But it so, was yeah, a guy was black in and, middle of the night. Yeah, it yeah. was. That was. The we thing. didn't get. Did we get towed, or did he just navigate he in front us. of us? Yeah. Yeah. He was like right in front of us. Yeah. <laughs> which is good because it was like. Yeah. So it, it's like pitch black and the lights are backwards. Thanks, Tilo. Yeah. <laughs> hey, good to see you. Oh, oh real yes. quick. Big Thumbs shout up. out to Tilo. Um, thanks again for lending us your apartment. It's been incredible. And we're really going to be sad to <laughs> leave it in uh, on Next either week. Wednesday or Thursday. Hopefully yep. we will actually be leaving it, but it's going to be very bittersweet. Big thanks to Tilo. Yeah. <laughs> so. With Bermuda, you get through Town Cut. Now, Town Cut, the cut itself is literally one cruise ship wide. Yeah. So if there's a ship coming, you got some problems, which is why you have to radio ahead to make sure it's good to go and all those fun things. And you can see, really deep, bunch of coral. You get off course, you're either going to run aground or crash and throw coral and rocks and you're, you're done. And then beautiful anchorage. <laughs> and it was the town of uh, St. George, is it St. George's or St. George? St. George's. I can't remember. Okay. Uh, the town of St. George's is a lovely town. We really preferred it over Hamilton because Hamilton's like a big bustling city. And for it's cruisers, yeah, for cruisers, St. George's was very accessible. It even had a supermarket that had discounts for cruisers. Yeah. If you told me you were on a boat, it was, I think, 5 or 10% off. It was yeah nice. they're very cruiser friendly there which i think is super important for a good anchorage yeah so if you go there say hi to valerie for us she's at the grocery store <laughs> <laughs> yes 
Um, okay, next. So next is Oriental, North Carolina. Oh, just beautiful as that. well. Mm, I can't so. wait to go back there, honestly, guys. It's it's off of the ICW. Yep. Um, so, well, one of you guys mentioned that uh, the Chesapeake, it's nice because little tide and little current. That's very true. But Oriental has no tide. Like, like zero. I do no. not understand it because <laughs> just outside in the Noose River, there's tide. Yeah. But inside there, it's like Shangri-La. It's like perfect and happy and just so pretty. So, so. we ended up uh, actually setting a Bahamian mooring uh, while we were there because we had... <laughs> Uh, a lot of issues in Oriental, not because of Oriental, but because our motor broke down there. Yeah, so our little controller to the motor just stopped controlling our motor. <laughs> so we went to leave after being there for a week, and then it, it didn't go. And you know that we don't love motoring at all if we can help it, but we were in the ICW, and we weren't about to get anywhere without our motor. Nope. So we were stuck there for three weeks, I think. Yes. And we never had any problems with the anchorage. And this is actually the- The free dock. Free dock. You yep. can be there for 24 hours. Well, no, no, that's the neat dock. The free docks, you can be there for 24 hours, but they're yeah. about four, four and a half feet deep at them. So yeah, we couldn't fit. we didn't get there. <laughs> so the whole area of Oriental, when you look on the map, there's this little breakwater, which is, we're anchored in here. And then the dinghy dock is literally that little guy sticking out right there. So you just row over to it and then come back. Now, the only issue with Oriental, if it shows up, it's going to say it's about six feet deep everywhere in the anchorage. And that is 100% true. We, <laughs> it's a very, very soft mud. So we our just keel like... just like... <laughs> yeah, that, that was uh, well, that yeah, was it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, it was great in there, and we're gonna go back into that. Yeah, the yeah one, mm. when we were leaving there, we actually had to uh, thrust a bit to like push the mud up. <laughs> it was on. fine, uh, soft, soft mud, and uh, we were actually a really, really cool feature about that anchorage is that we were over there over Thanksgiving, and oh, since yes. we were stuck there, we decided to travel to see some uh, cousins and aunts and uncles who live in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we were, there's a camera yes. that looks out onto the anchorage. So yeah. you can literally check up on your boat if you're not there. Yeah, so the town has a website with webcams looking at the harbor from like a bunch of different angles. Yes, and, we did. John uh, said we did a lot of depth sounding in the ICW. Yes, that we is found accurate. Every place is six and a half feet. We, we right there. <laughs> but so there's this uh, website. It's towndoc.net, I think it is, and it's Oriental's website. Like they have all everyone's birthday, like just everything going on. And it's really cute. Yeah. It's a tiny town. It's, it's <laughs> an awesome town. Yeah. The town is full of ex. Cruisers former, and retired cruisers. Yes, former cruisers and uh, world travelers. It's like this little town. Ooh, it's thundering. Yes. Oh, dramatic. It's this little town uh, that no one's ever heard of in the. Uh, it's like is Southern North Carolina. Uh, nor, no, like middle North Carolina. <laughs> it's it's close to Hatteras <laughs> and Ocracoke. <laughs> well, that's kind of northern. Okay. Um. And it, but the people there are so worldly and kind and, you know, would just come up to us in a restaurant and start talking to us. Well, so it makes sense because they knew we weren't from there because mm -hmm. they know everyone who lives there. So therefore we're new. There's a new boat in the Harbor because they're all, everyone checks the website. Yeah. And literally on the website, it'll like, these are the new people in town and like, <laughs> go say hi to them. And it was, it was neat. <laughs> Hello, Christine O'Neill. Oh yeah, hi, Christine. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I mean, the other great thing, and then we'll we'll get off Oriental. But there's just so many good things about Oriental. Uh, is that when you go up, uh, right from the dinghy dock, you come upon the first thing you come upon is the uh, ship store. Yes. And they have bikes out in front that you can just. Borrow. borrow but literally it's there's no money and the funny thing i asked them oh you know do i need to bring my own lock and they're like what for why would you lock a bike here 
No crime. There's no crime. Yeah. So we could leave our boat anchored in the middle of the anchorage and not worry about yeah. it at all. Bring the dinghy to shore, hop on a bike, go to a restaurant. Yeah, it was and idyllic. Monday was sushi. Thursday was singing and uh, and pizza. And, <laughs> oh yeah, it, every day had something different. Yeah, it was, it so was good. cool. Yeah. Uh, so, that's so as Oriental. you can see, we really like Oriental. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're excited. That's probably our favorite stop in the ICW. Yo. Now, next we have. Doom, 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 doom. There. Yeah. White Key. Oh, hello from Belgium. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, Maurice. So, this is us, this little guy here. And, and the water is beautiful. Yeah, this is in the Bahamas. Now, an important thing to note, notice the green grass. That's going to be important later. This is sunset. There's sunset. Oh, and that's our little rowing dinghy. Yeah. <laughs> Tooth. <laughs> Yo. And this is when a Google worker is on acid while they're coloring the islands. <laughs> the satellite field. Because <laughs> as you can see... Not not too green there. And the other important thing, here it says that that's saddle key. But on Navionics, which I trust more, that's white key and saddle key is down below. So, this place. So, this was an amazing place. And before, uh, we had mentioned that for us, an idyllic an anchorage would be uh, near t some town or community or something. Um, but this one is idyllic in a different way because for a lot of people, the perfect ideal anchorage is just you totally alone with your own private island. Yep. <laughs> and that's what this one is. Yeah. So this while is... we were there, there were three, uh, it was us and two other boats. So we were three boats in the anchorage. We never saw the other people. They were so far away. And then everyone had their own private island that they went to at sunset. It was just... We had a picnic on the beach. It was just us. And uh, it was in the Berries, the Berry Islands. Yes. So a lot of people don't go there because they're not commercialized. Um, a lot of the islands in the Berries are actually owned by cruising companies. So like you, cruise ships. Yeah, yeah. So you can't like go on the islands. But we found this perfect spot. And it was just the best introduction to the Bahamas and their beauty and wild. Yeah. So Wind Over Water was telling us about Devil Key or Devil's Key that that was their favorite and Devil's Key is literally just south of there mm -hmm. but it's too shallow for us to get in there so we didn't go to Devil's Key. <laughs> we didn't. So um, yeah but this was uh, perfect for just if you enjoy being totally secluded which is great right now. Yeah socially. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, today is the last day we're having a sale on the social isolation shirt. Oh yeah, you guys so should definitely check it out. There's a coupon code. It's COVID nineteen because I have a twisted sense of humor. You get twenty five percent off the shirt, so the shirt comes out to be like seventeen bucks instead of twenty something. Yes, and you can uh, find that in the link below any of our videos. Yep. Yeah. All right. So now, getting into this beautiful place is terrifying because <laughs> so you come in from the bottom it's not here. that terrifying oh, it was horrible <laughs> like scariest thing ever you were terrified i yeah, was yeah. fine so you come in you don't actually see this gap this looks really big but in reality you just think you're heading towards rocks and then there's like all these reefs that you're going past this is so scary and then you come in and then anchor and but the beauty fine. of the bahamas is that the water is so clear you can have one person standing on the bow kind of checking to make sure that you're not going to hit a rock or a reef yeah and that's so, what we did i would stand on the bow and kind of yell out and point at things <laughs> yep. now our, our system is we point at danger not point at the direction to go yeah. and that's a really important thing to make clear because otherwise you're gonna <laughs> sink <laughs> so it's true uh, whoever you're sailing with you have to come up with a system that you both agree on that works well for you yeah and uh if you're crewing on a boat whatever, their whatever system they is, want it's <laughs> their boat yes so place number three or actually anchorage number six yeah Woo. we're going flying through these pig beach staniel key ah but the pigs yeah so, okay. so this is us yeah. right there behind my head <laughs> and then that is a giant boat that we look like the dinghy too yes so staniel key was probably 
uh, after the berries are definitely one of our favorite anchorages in all of the Bahamas because, well, for a myriad reasons. The first one was just the access to so many awesome things. There was access to a cruiser's kind of party beach, great cruising community there because it's one of the most popular anchorages in the Bahamas. Yep. Uh, there's, because of those pigs. Yes. Which the pigs aren't. A good reason we were to go very there. Uh, disappointed about the pigs themselves, and yeah. you can rewatch any of these videos if you feel so inclined. We're gonna include the links to the videos that have these anchorages in the description later. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Yeah, it's happening. <laughs> okay, it's happening. I know what I'm doing after this video. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you're interested to see our video on the pig beach, uh, we do go travel there and uh, see the pigs. And yeah, I was really looking forward to it and then when we got there it turns out that the pigs are farm pigs that are just brought there because tourists want the pigs and the pigs unfortunately have an incredibly small lifespan because they're eating sand all the time because people feed them in the sand and drunk people also lead to their uh, short life yeah, yeah. and the people so, are ugh, it's, honestly it's it very was, touristic the the pigs weren't great but the people watching of the drunks on the <laughs> beach was that was really but, good if you just go around the bend with your dinghy, there's such incredible beauty. And that's where Staniel Key is. Yes. Uh, and so, you'll... Oh, let's put up the map. Oh, yes. How yes. convenient. So the water is so clear that you will actually see your boat's shadow under it. Mm -hmm. This just happened to be... You know, oh, actually, there's the mass shadow on the seafloor. It's beautiful. Yeah. It, it's just a beautiful <laughs> anchorage. Okay. So this is the place. So, doo -doo -doo. so this is where we anchored, and then here is the Pig Beach. That's Cruisers Beach, and then this beach, nothing was on. So if you want complete isolation, yeah, that was your beach. Cruisers Beach was cute. There's like, um, there was like a woman who does did exercises oh, in yeah. the morning there. Yep. So and you go like, in the morning, do yeah. your workout. <laughs> it was really really cute. And then go back for sunrise. So then yes. you go around. You go around this island here, yep. and this is Staniel Key, and that's where I think the magic really is. That's where you can find the, uh, oh, what's it called? Thunderball Grotto? Yes, Thunderball so the, Grotto, the, the best thing in the Bahamas. Yeah, the Thunderball Grotto is, like, right here. It's, it's like, right in the middle on your way across. You just dingy right up oh, to it and so amazing. wear your snorkel gear, the and you fish. go in at uh, low tide. Yeah. yeah, go in at low tide. Go in ideally around like low slack water as the tide's rising. And when it starts getting too high, then just get out of there. There's an incredible current in there. Yes. Uh, which makes it really difficult. And unfortunately, uh, because of humans, there's a lot less fish and coral in there than there used to be. But it's still incredible. And the fish will just surround you. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> if you don't shower for like a couple of days, they'll like nibble off your skin. And then if you just go a little bit further on uh, into Staniel Key, there's a great place, little beach to uh, beach your dinghy. And then you go in and there's a restaurant and a, two grocery stores and a yes. dump. Yes, the dump was hilarious because you wonder where do they put all their trash? And one guy at the marina told us he was he wanted to charge us like a lot of money to take our trash to the dump because the dump was 20 miles away. And I'm like, your island's not even a mile long. <laughs> yeah. So... It was like a 10 minute walk. We walked to the dump. We just followed the smoke. <laughs> yeah, it's literally a burning pit of trash. And yeah. you just dump your trash in. And There was like an old airplane in there. It was kind of weird. Yeah, it was, it was odd. Yeah. But anyway, so coming into Staniel Key, you can see all this beautiful sand and then ocean. And that's important because on the charts, that is the ocean and that's the shelf. So if you try and come in from this way, you can see it's like a maze and you're probably not gonna have a good time. So you don't really wanna come in from the ocean on this area. You wanna go in like more around Compass Key, but this place, you come in from the other side, the, the leeward side, and you just sail right in. And everything is all like 20 feet deep everywhere. And those giant super yachts that were there, they have so much light on them that we actually sailed in at night and we're like we don't yeah. come into anchorages at night as because, a rule yeah like ever because people don't use their anchor Except lights for that one and, in bermuda <laughs> yeah but we got let in yeah. but this one like we came in and it was like maybe two in the morning or something and we sailed in 
very comfortably because all the boats had so much light on that you could see they were glowing and then everyone around them was glowing and like oh it was great so we just like anchored on the outside of them but then when we when the sun came up we loved where we were so we just stayed there the only downside to that anchorage and why it is not uh before the one in the berries is that it does get extremely crowded especially during uh the the on season which we were we were there after after so we're always there because we're never <laughs> yeah we're just always missing the right season to be in places but th- we actually like it that way because we got the anchorage uh mostly to ourselves there were a t- couple giant yachts with like huge a flotilla s- like slides down yeah, them and... <laughs> it was like a hundred and some foot boat with like yeah. a 60 foot sport fish on it and then like a couple <laughs> runabouts that are bigger than our boat <laughs> i think there were like two other sailboats there uh who we connected with in cruisers beach and oh yes it Cruisers was... beach was fun yeah oh was... so if you go there when you go to cruisers beach you have to take some painting supplies yes. because you paint a board and then you put it up and we've actually had a lot of people hmm. uh go there on in- and uh on instagram I don't think so. Tag us on, uh, tag us in their picture where they, where you can still see our little rigging doctor post uh, on the tree where I, I painted it. <laughs> yeah, Maddie used good paint, so it's still there. Yeah. Well, the others are still there, too. The ones from the other cruisers. Oh, yes, yes. But mm-hmm. they also, like, a lot of people use, like, Interlux paint. Yeah, that's true. That's like, really good awesome. quality paint. Maddie used... Uh, I used my painting acrylic. <laughs> <laughs> indoor paints. Yeah. So it's amazing that they're standing up. And they, they've been to a hurricane. They have. Yeah. And they're, they're still there. So thanks to anybody who has sent us a picture. It's always fun to see. Uh, now, like I said, it's very crowded there during the summer. So one thing that's bad about it is that it's loud. And you kind of can't get away from that. But it's still, uh, with crowded comes a community. And so you can tune into the radio and, like, talk to people. And so I think that it's really... it definitely deserves its place on our top 10. We'll def be rewatching your Bahamas vids and daydreaming <laughs> post COVID. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yep. It's good times. They're fun videos. Hang out with people. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. We don't have very many views on our Bahamas videos and I never could figure out why, but maybe we'll see. <laughs> yep. So next place. Our next place. Wait, wait, wait. My parents are texting me. Sorry guys. Uh, The next place is we're going back to the Chesapeake. No, No, we're not. We're going back to the ICW. And this was one of our favorite places in the ICW, just for the views and the beauty. It's the Waccamaw River. So it's fresh water. Like, uh, just look at that. There's like the trees coming out of the water. Cypress trees completely surrounding you all the way up the river and oh. it's it was gorgeous so it's fresh water so like anything that was trying to grow on your bottom is no more yeah <laughs> and uh you're just you're constantly inundated with beauty everywhere you are and it the smells of nature just surround you it was nice it's a wonderful place now, so peaceful hmm. so it's got some issues mm-hmm. which is why all the pictures from other anchorages are off the boat and Wakama, we have no pictures off the boat it's because being freshwater there's alligators <laughs> so we couldn't we never actually we just spent a night there on our way down the river we were there a couple nights we were yeah, yeah. Oh. it was nice <laughs> yeah um, so we actually hit out a storm there because that's right we, it was so long ago yeah so, the Waccamaw River is a long river, and while we thought we were completely isolated while preparing all these photos for you guys, it turns out we were, well, we were here, and right here is a big neighborhood. But we had no idea. <laughs> we had no idea, but this is perfect. Yeah. Right here. It's so protected, and it's actually huge, so we had room to swing and never get close to trees, and you can see the depths. It's uniform depths. And the thing is, it's a it's nice, it's a nice depth right along the trees like you can act you can actually get really close to the trees oh so uh someone asked if we got to rhode island and buzzards bay and no we went from baltimore and started heading south yeah we haven't been north yet we will do that in the future yeah <laughs> i'm looking forward to it we want to go all the way up to canada so that's the Wakama. um if you haven't been there and you 
are, you like to sail the ICW or motor the ICW, whatever you do, I highly recommend it. It's, yeah. it's now, just really beautiful. There, there is current there. Mm -hmm. So it's important. The current flows from Myrtle Beach to uh, Georgetown. So if you're trying to go Georgetown up to Myrtle Beach, you're you're always going to be fighting a current. There's never slack water in there. Yeah. So, but it's not too bad. It's like a couple knots. So it was great for us because it was you know pushing knots at a couple knots and it's important. It was the only place in the ICW that was deep enough I so know. that we never that's, ran a current. That's why we loved it so much. We have such good memories of the Wakama because it was the first. I swear, it was the first and probably only place in the ICW that we did not run aground. Yeah. Because <laughs> our, our big issue, like, we'd be in the channel, and low tide would come, and we'd just dig into the mud on the bottom. And it wasn't yeah. always, like, it, we, it uh. wasn't always, like, accidental. It was just we'd anchor somewhere and just end up on the ground because the tides were, and the... Pretty intense. They were yeah. intense. <laughs> so we'd just be like, all right, we're on the ground. We'd, like, tilt a little bit, and then, and then we'd come, we'd up, come and, up and yeah. keep going. <laughs> yeah. That, so, that yeah. That so fast. <laughs> the ICW. Yeah. Not great <laughs> for us. Yeah. Uh, we're excited to do it in our other boat. <laughs> yes, yes. Which is part of the reason that we're going to be fitting out Windpuff when we get back mm -hmm. for future adventures. So, next place. Oh, yes. The next place is... Also in the ICW. Yes. Wrightsville Beach. Doo. <laughs> Doo -doo. <laughs> and so many of these are in the ICW... <laughs> Um, because well, the ICW has some really nice anchorages. A lot of our, I mean, the whole past, I guess, we, uh, are you ever going to do the Pacific? So the Pacific is not on our plans. Probably not. Yeah. And we're restricted from our boat also. Oh yeah. It's so hard yeah. to be away from well, the boat. Yeah. So they were saying that they're away from their boat and don't have any ability to check on it and yeah. yeah that's us too thankfully people uh walk by our boat and take pictures and text them to us yeah at el Manny mar they have nice. a fantastic facebook community and we've i've posted like hey if anyone's walking past wisdom can you just send us a little picture and i, I got many responses it was and really really nice the water line is right where we left it yes. so i <laughs> sleep well <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so, so yeah um i'm sorry well the, the icw it's it's shallow it has silting issues and all that but the anchorages are just so nice because well you're mm -hmm. completely surrounded by cities and towns and everything oh. any, any mapping, mapping that allows you to have a decent access to the bottom views any mapping. oh uh i mean navionics, navionics. Yeah. so you can't see it on here because it's, it's difficult doing screen to screen <laughs> um but, but it has all the depths yeah, and the contour lines, I have them set to one foot each. So it's it's very exact. The problem is some of the areas, especially in like South Carolina uh, and North Carolina, <laughs> every time the tide changes, the bottom shifts. So, so it's there, it's silt. Um, or, or light sand. Or, right. Yeah. It's, well, they it's call amazing. it silting, right? Yeah. When it shifts. So uh, we were actually, and we had the, again, we were not on season. So... The ICW wasn't uh, dredged. dredged as much as often as they would during peak season. The problem with peak season is that you have traffic. So we had no traffic. Yeah, we were alone. But we ran aground in the middle of the channel. But we were alone. <laughs> yeah. So. so it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And what I was saying before is just that the reason most of our anchorages are along the east coast of the U.S. is because... Uh, a lot of our time was spent crossing the ocean, obviously no anchoring in the ocean, and then the Azores has no anchoring. Well, all right, so it has anchoring, but... No anchoring that we would suggest. No, yeah, no good <laughs> anchoring. So that little criteria we have, if there aren't good anchorages, we take a marina because... Mm -hmm. And we had to do a marina yeah. during the Azores because we were doing all that work on our boat anyway. So yeah, we were so on the hard. out, yeah. <laughs> So the Azores, well, okay, so we like like 10 to 20 feet, sand or mud, all those things. The Azores, the designated anchorage was 50 feet deep and boulders, like like yeah. large rocks. And I talked about That was like, in uh, Horta. Horta and Tercera. Oh, yeah? Just outside of the marina was that anchorage. We had friends who anchored in yeah. Horta. And oh. <laughs> we were hiking with them. And he was telling us about how it was so great because the water was so clear in the harbor that his boat like went over his anchor and he could see his anchor just sitting on top of a rock. Which I was like, I'm thinking, wait, why? <laughs> why are you up here hiking? You didn't really, like. He's like, oh no, it's fine. Chains like hooked around some rocks down there. I'm like, 
Because the problem is, like, what if he drags or what if someone drags into you? Like, yeah. oh, no. So we, we didn't do that. We did a marina. Um, so, yeah, that's just – so most of our anchorages on this list are East Coast. But also <laughs> most of our favorite anchorages are East Coast because you have right. good anchorages and then stuff to go see. We anchored a lot in uh, Europe, but – the anchorages just well, weren't great. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll get, get into that, that later. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. So Wrightsville Beach. Wrightsville Beach. We liked Wrightsville Beach uh, because it was, the, it's a beach town. You have this giant area that you can see from Google Satellite is full of sailboats anchored. And the chart, it's all nice and uniform depth. It's a great sandy bottom. Mm -hmm. Crazy current. <laughs> <laughs> and huge tide. It's like six or eight foot tide. So we there. really had to time when we went to shore. Yeah. And there was a dinghy dock that we never found, but we just went up on a beach and then walked to the road. Yeah. You just have to pull your dinghy above the high water line because <laughs> it's still drift away. We usually, we when we do that, when we beach our dinghy, we usually tie it to a tree or something. Mm -hmm. We never, we never like just a leave a it on a beach because yeah. a, you don't know if somebody's going to steal it. And even though a lot of these places were very safe, but you never know. And b, uh, you don't want it to be swept away by the tide. <laughs> It's Which, not good. No. Not good. <laughs> All right. So. And that was Wrightsville Beach. And we also liked Wrightsville Beach because there were a lot of cool restaurants. Um, it was very cruiser friendly. And also, it's like a huge cruiser spot to go to. Yeah. So there were a whole bunch of people that we met up with in Oriental that we then saw again at Wrightsville Beach. Yeah, it's, so we got back like together the with to them. It was really fun. Uh, and it's in North Carolina as yes. well. So the next one. We've got... Back to the Chesapeake. This one is back to the Chesapeake. Yes, way <laughs> in the Chesapeake. So this is Oxford. It's beautiful. And it's so calm in there. And the water is like 10 feet deep everywhere. So it's kind of on the shallow side. But there's, the tide's only a couple feet. So it's not really bad at all. Not at all. And the bottom is just like sticky mud. So <laughs> It's a perfect safe haven uh, for um, any squall or storm that could be coming. Yeah. It's, it's like the water is like glass. The river. Yeah. Yeah. And well, it's a beautiful sail to get there. It's yeah. just a really pretty part of the Chesapeake. Oxford itself is a really cute, quiet town. There's like two restaurants. <laughs> It's a lot of old people. <laughs> it's a lot of old people. Her, Herbie's... Um, My grandmother lives there. My <laughs> grandmother lives there, and she's super sweet, and we love visiting her. And Oxford is just... It's a wonderful place to just relax completely yeah. and uh, not worry about anything like dragging. Yeah, so this beautiful anchorage. So you can see, you come in the Tread Avon River, and then you, like, pop into this thing, and you just anchor, like, in this area. Because, actually, all of this is way too shallow for any boat to ever imagine. <laughs> And here's the chart. So you have complete protection from like all directions. It's it's just so nice in there. And really good is somewhere up in this area, there's an ice cream place. <laughs> and the and ice I cream, love ice cream. The ice cream there is like exceptional. Yeah, it's I like don't... Scottish creamery. Yeah, or something. I don't. We, yeah. especially Herbie, is like really into ice cream. I'm going to close the curtain a little. Oh, are we getting a bad glare? We're getting a huge glare. Oh. Yeah. Back. It's doing strange things outside. It's raining really hard, but it's sunny. So I'll bet there's a beautiful rainbow. There is, there is. There is? Yeah. yeah. <gasps> no, I, I didn't really look for oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I love rainbows. Ice cream! Yeah, ice cream's really big for us. Yeah. Well, <laughs> all right, so my issue is our freezer can't hold ice cream. Or it our can't freezer keep ice in the cream boat. from melting. Yeah. yeah. So ice cream is like super special, which was the other reason I loved Oriental so much is because the breakfast place. Oh my gosh, they had enormous portions of ice cream. Yeah, it was like two bucks for this giant thing of ice cream. The place is called The Bean. Yes. Such fantastic coffee, oh. fantastic ice cream, great bagels. We're back on Oriental. Yep, Oriental is, <laughs> we really like Oriental, if you couldn't tell. All right. So, so Oxford. <laughs> this is Oxford. It's number nine. Yes. And now for number 10. Do, 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 do. Number 10. There we are. <laughs> oh, yes. You have to go there, Christine. It's really awesome. Yeah, so Christine says, okay, we're going there. <laughs> yes. All right. So this is the only European anchorage that made the cut at all. <laughs> there so, we are. Yep. So it's it's got some issues, but it, it was nice. It was really nice. And the great thing about it was that it was super protected. 
Um, oh, well, let's show them why. Yes. So. The next time we see you, we're bringing a ton of spam <laughs> and a bunch of ice cream from our yeah. favorite place. Oh, boy. Maybe Thank we can you. go to the favorite place with you. That'd be fun. Yeah. So, okay. So this is... The, all right, oh, wait. We didn't say where this is. So this place is <laughs> okay. called Portimao in Portugal. It's in Faro. It's on the southern coast. And it's... It's beautiful there. It's the Algarve. It's it is the Algarve. People from Portugal and Spain and all over go down there uh, because it has some of the most beautiful and best beaches in the world. It's so nice. Yeah. So now you're on a boat. You come in. There's this nice breakwater, which is actually very it's effective. It's stupid wide. Yeah. It's like really wide. Oh, it was so comfortable sailing. <laughs> yeah. And then you come to this beautiful big anchorage here. Which is where we anchored. Yes. And then we're told to move because there was a race coming. <laughs> so were, if yeah. you ever go there, that is marked as a designated anchorage. And it's like this perfect it's, anchorage. Literally, it's 20 <laughs> feet deep everywhere. But no one Sand. is anchored there. Yeah. And there's a reason. And we found out. <laughs> yeah, we anchored there. We were exhausted. And then the cops knocked yeah. on our boat in the morning. We're like, you have to move. It's kind of a local knowledge thing. Uh, you just don't anchor there. But you can anchor just a little bit further in. Yes, which is going up this way. Uh, yes, on this side. So you go up here and you anchor on this skinny edge so but the thing is the water is super deep right up to the beach yeah as you can see it's like cliff and then land so um one thing we liked about this anchorage was that it is very popular kind of like staniel key have Wait. you anchored in saint michael's no yeah we've actually and never I'll gotten bet, saint michael's i'll yet. bet if we had it would have made this list yeah so when we were anchored in oxford we drove to saint michael's we did. And we love St. Michael's. It's probably one of my favorite towns along the Chesapeake. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. It's got a vineyard uh, and it's it's got lots of good restaurants, seafood. Yep. All right. So back to Portugal. Yeah. <laughs> so Portimao, when you anchor, it's about 30 feet deep, which is really bad because that means that you have to let out all your time. Hi, Melinda. Oh, Glad Melinda. you could join us. <laughs> So it's it's 30 feet deep, and then the current is insane because you're actually anchored in a river, which also means the water's kind of rivery, and the tide is, it was either 10 or 12 feet. It was ridiculous. So the <laughs> problem is, crazy tide. like, you anchor, and it's, like, 20 feet deep, and you're, you know, you let out your scope, 7 to 1, everything's fine, and then the tide comes up, and you're going to start dragging because But the tide short. is crazy, like, everywhere in Europe. Yeah, so that's why... Yeah. That was the only one that made the cut because, so this anchorage, the dinghy dock was more than a mile away, upriver, which wasn't great. But the, you could beat your boat right across from the anchorage. Yeah, so it was literally like just, and then you tie up, yeah. or just pull up on the beach and you're done. Which is what we did, and it's yeah. a really cute town. It's what everyone does there. Mm -hmm. And then the, all those huge beaches at night, all the cruisers would have barbecues. And, yeah, oh, it, was it was so nice. fun. And uh, you've got great access to the beaches of Algarve. We did have to Uber to one of our hikes, but the cool thing is we did that, like, again, you can go back and watch the video. It was a more recent one, so you've probably seen it, but uh, we did, like, a four-mile dinghy ride to all these incredible caves uh, right outside the anchorage. We love to anchor in St. Michael's. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we're going to have to do it. We're doing it. On our way back, we're doing it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> um, yeah, like I was saying before, it's a very crowded anchorage, but... Well, the thing is, since the current is so strong, your boat is only in one of two positions. Yeah. And everyone is pointing the same way. Exactly. Because the current's like... <sighs> also, a lot of the people are full keel there. Yeah, because it's a lot of cruisers. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that is... Good. That means that the, if, if, if you're full keel, it means that everybody else that's full keel is going to be facing the, the same, same way. way. Yeah. <laughs> so that that was really important. And All right. So the current was so strong that we were there with a 30-knot blow, and our boat was still sideways to the wind because the current <laughs> kept it that way. And everyone else was too. Like, it was just... It but was we were comfortable. Like, yeah. I've been it's, in anchorages no where I actually threw up. <laughs> like... Yep. Because the, the seas were so bad in the anchorage. Um, but in this one, we were in that blow, and I was totally fine. Yeah. 
And then the other great part is when it's time to leave the anchorage, you just wait for slack water, pull up your anchor, and the current will just spit you out. Like It's true. It's <laughs> quite easy and convenient. <laughs> yeah, Portimao was a really, really cool place to go. Uh, if you ever have plans on about crossing the Atlantic or uh, even chartering over there, yeah. I highly recommend Portimao. It's a great cruising community, and uh, there is a ship store. Is there? Yeah, yeah. That's where we got our dinghy up with. Right. Okay. Yeah. They have oh, a great... So, yeah. Our dinghy <laughs> motor died. Mm -hmm. that, or, well, it died a long time ago. We realized it was dead in Portimao. Because <laughs> we needed it again. Yeah. So we rowed with oars in an inflatable, which was fun, like a mile up the river. To that dinghy dock. Mm -hmm. But the great thing is uh, they have everything you could need over there. Oh, they everything. have like three different stores and... Yeah, there's so many Chandlers and they're so yeah. well stocked. Yeah, is, and is. but the thing you have to remember about anchoring there or anywhere in Europe is that you do need to have a day an signal. anchor ball. Mm -hmm. It's a day signal. <laughs> day signal, yeah, which is something that we didn't really, we knew about for like big ships. Well, all right, so it's something you read about doing. Yeah. Oh, we love watching. Wrightsville, fun watching the surfers there. Yes. yes. Yeah. Aw, you guys did Wrightsville too. So, yeah, so you're supposed to have an anchor ball, which is this little black sphere that says, I'm anchored, the same way that when you're sailing, you're supposed to have an inverted cone, which nobody has, because <laughs> you have your sails out, and you're obviously sailing. But it, it's all these day signals that tell people, I'm motoring, I'm anchored, I'm aground, all, all sorts of things. Uh, in the States, no one does it. I mean, people don't even do anchor lights in the States. Which, which is, is really annoying. Which pet peeve. <laughs> oh. uh. But in... There, everyone had anchor lights on at night mm -hmm. and little anchor balls by day. So we now have an anchor ball because we're in Europe and, you know. Yeah, and the own. anchor ball is actually really useful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because you can see from far away if these people are anchored or not. Yeah, so all we do is we just set it up. We tie it to our staysail halyard mm -hmm. and just hoist, hoist it, up. it up. Yeah, now. it was great. And we were able to get it at the chandlery. Yep. <laughs> And they're really cheap. Oh, yeah. and all prices in Portugal are like 90% of what they would have been in the States. Like you pay like 10%. It's so <laughs> cheap over there. Oh, Portugal is an excellent place for cruisers uh, for that reason. I mean, everything is so inexpensive. Did you know we really good. like Portugal? <laughs> yeah, we love Portugal. <laughs> yeah. So guys, that is any plans of sailing into the Venetian Lagoon? No. No. All right, uh, agreed pet peeve. Last time we anchored in the Key Biscayne. Yeah, 80% of boats didn't have anchor weights on it. Yeah, that's, uh, that is... <laughs> that drives me so... And, and I, what's worse is when you tell people like, hey, you should have your anchor light on. Apparently in the States, if you're in a designated anchorage, you do not have to burn an anchor light. Which is... <sighs> you can be dead right. Like if I smash into you and you sink in the night. Plans of coming back across <sighs> for some. Caribbean sailing, yes. Uh, yes, we do have plans oh, to... hello, Dale. <laughs> Hi, Dale. Oh, good to see you. Um, yes, Christina, uh, we do have plans to go back to the Caribbean and sail the Caribbean. So we're going to be sailing back this autumn, as they say it over here in Europe. <laughs> they don't say fall. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, November is when we plan on crossing, so we'll spend the winter in the Caribbean. Yeah. As long as everything is Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and crime-wise with COVID and all yeah, that. Yeah, everything gets a little iffy right now, but Quite that's rare. our plan, and we're really excited for it, you know, especially right now. We're just kind of dreaming about it. <laughs> yeah, so right now our dream is we're going to leave Spain and then go to Cape Verde and figure out where we're going in the Caribbean, but we'll figure that one out yeah, later. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have a list. Excellent. <laughs> so those are our favorite 10 anchorages in the Atlantic pretty much so far. Do you see oh, no. other boats leaving their AIS transmitters on when they are anchored? This is fantastic when they do. Yes, we see I a agree. lot of them, and we, we do it as well. We always leave ours yeah. on. Yeah. And this is a very selfish reason to leave your AIS on. You're miles away hiking, and you're like, man, I wonder if we're dragging. And you just <laughs> pull out your cell phone, and you go to, like, marinetraffic.com, and you can find your boat, and you're like, oh, still there. You can literally uh. see if you're dragging or not. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, but it's always super helpful to do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 
any way that you can possibly, any precaution you can take to make sure people don't hit you while you're anchored is a great is one. good. There's yes. no reason not to have your anchor light on. Yeah. And then extra lights. Like, we'll leave deck lights on and stuff to just, like, try and light up the boat as much as we can. Because yeah. we had one issue when we were in Reedville where the boats, I don't know if they knew how big we were and were great just trying ice to cream spook us. Reedville. Oh, yeah. Reedville had good ice cream. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they were just trying to spook us. Or if they just happened to have missed us and it was luck that they didn't crash into us. But they passed so close that I like hung little extra anchor lights on the bow and stern for them. Because it was, <laughs> that was scary. Yeah. Um, Naturally, that place didn't make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> Although that was a really it nice It was really anchorage. nice, yeah. Reedville probably would be number 11, honestly, because it was so protected. The only thing we didn't like about it was the smell. Of the Menhaden. Of the Menhaden. It, yeah. They would just wafts. Waft, so, waft, yeah. <laughs> waft onto your boat, and it would just horrid. It was horrid smell. When we started our trip, it was in 2017. I think it was Jose and Irma might have been the two hurricanes, but they were going by, and we hit out for both of them in Reedville, and like they were pretty close to the coast. We had perfect and, protection. Yeah, there was some wind, but no seas. Like it was glass calm in there. It was nice. Yeah. So uh, I want to pose a question to you guys. Do you have any favorite anchorages uh, along, well, anywhere, anywhere you've yeah. been? Um, <laughs> we shall read them out loud. We will read them. Uh, the other thing is, like, especially, that's when you shine your spotlight in their face. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Or blow your horn or something annoying yeah. and saying hello. <laughs> yeah, and also, you know, the other thing about anchor lights is they're really pretty. Yeah, they look like anchored stars, which was mm, my shirt. Kind of reminds us of one of our shirts. I'm going to take it out. One of our best selling shirts, actually. It's because I like it so much. It's, uh, it was a design that was actually uh, thought of by Herbie, and I executed it perfectly. <laughs> Do you know if it's in this pile? I don't know. Mm. It's okay. Okay. So ask him about the time for the next video. Um, so yeah, if any of you have anchorages, please share them now uh, or share them in the comments down below because we would love to try them out and because it's great for other cruisers to see, uh, to know. Because a good anchor, there's nothing like a good anchorage. Yeah. Uh, good anchorages can make or break your entire trip. <laughs> yeah and, and the other thing it's not about like secret anchorages because as you can see we told you guys our 10 favorite ones <laughs> so you can kind of assume where we're gonna be if we're in that area <laughs> yeah it's just um it can make the difference between a horrible time and a wonderful perfect time uh the anchorage just means so much mm -hmm. so i want to get the t-shirt today <laughs> They're, um, they're all available. They're still available. The sale ends today. Co yeah, if they're, if you want to so, get the t-shirt on sale, yeah, so you have to get it today. Is COVID, C-O-V-I-D, all capital, mm -hmm. 19. And you can get 25% discount. We're doing a COVID discount. No. <laughs> um, yeah, and all the t-shirt designs, if you didn't know, are original to us. We, we designed them all. Um, okay, let me see here. All right. Okay, so um, we've got Covered Portage Cove, North Channel, Canada. Ooh, that's good to know. Thank you. We do want to sail Canada someday. Anchoring by the Stars, you have one. Yay. <laughs> it's one of our top sellers. So, right. Riga La Latvia. Where is that, Calvin? Can you tell us more about that? Latvia? Uh, love a few Georgia anchorages, big and little Tom Creek, as mm. well as Wally's Leg. Great places. We're going to write that down yeah. because we really want to go into Georgia this time uh, when we're going back to oh. the, uh, so, oh, Latvia, the country. Cool. So Dale Very was asking cool. if we have plotted our route back across the Atlantic. Yes. Uh, that we <laughs> Always. Yeah. So um, it's not going to be a live video because my computer doesn't want to cooperate with that but so i'm gonna do a recorded video of like the route planning to go from florida to europe the whole way by sail with no motor because that's kind of a thing that we did <laughs> and if you're trying if you plan it by motor and then your motor gives out yeah all your plan yeah you're put so always good to plan a route 
keeping in mind that you may, may not have a motor. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's the smartest and best way to do anything. Yeah. So we, we like sailing downwind. Yes. So yes. So, <laughs> oh, but with the Georgia anchorages, yeah. thank you. Because we actually skipped Georgia. We went Charleston, South Carolina, offshore we, <laughs> in the Fernandina. We, as soon as we could, we went offshore as much as possible uh, yeah. in the ICW for reasons that are pretty obvious by this video. Uh, we nope. ran aground <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Uh, so we skipped all of Georgia because Georgia is like super meandering and gosh. on the eight foot tides. Yeah. Oh, Corsica, Corsica River. River. Cool. Oh, hi, Warren. Uh, okay. Four to five great places. Oh, that's nice to know. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. Sweet. Yeah. We will be doing a lot of Chesapeake sailing when we get back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, it's funny, uh, we're over here, but we're dreaming of sailing back in the Chesapeake because that's where, you know, it's just so much fun. You can get to so many different places yeah, in such they, a short amount of time. Yeah, and you sail in and you can literally, do I want civilization? Do I not want civilization? And literally, it's one creek from the next. Yeah. And like, Well, South River versus Annapolis. You have a city or you have empty you know, forest. And we did learn the importance of anchorages there because the first time we sailed the Chesapeake, like a big long sail, <laughs> we just dropped anchor like wherever we felt we wanted to. And um, it was awful. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is what happens. I don't get seasick. Maddie gets seasick. So Very. before, so I had the boat two years before I met Maddie. So when I'd go out sailing on the weekend, I'd just go sail in the bay. And then when I got tired, I'd just drop the hook wherever I was. Because like, the bay is pretty, yeah, uh, it's pretty shallow. shallow. Have you sailed to the Balearic oh, Islands in the Med? So oh. Warp Drive asked, yeah, have we sailed to the Balearics? Uh, we were going to, but the way uh, the coronavirus lockdown is looking, we're not going to get to. I'm so bummed. Like, yeah. so bummed. I really wanted to oh. sail the uh, Balearics. And we had yeah, planned we, our anchorages oh. and everything. Actually. Which we do a lot of planning for our anchorages. They're not random. <laughs> uh, we actually do quite a bit of... Um, Regional... Got it. North Channel anchorages... Sorry, Kim. <laughs> the Navionics is slow. Oh, here we are. And, right. and Calvin says, uh, again, North Carolina or anywhere around there. Awesome. We love North Carolina. North and South Carolina were fantastic places to cruise. Okay. So, as you can see, I've been plotting little... Oh. As you can see, I've been plotting lots of little anchorages for us to go. And things that we look for with an anchorage is the bathymetry. So we want... Uh, nice and flat, well protected, floating screens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I think it's getting there. Okay, so yeah, so areas like this, it's like you're in a harbor, you're well protected. Now the problem with the Balearics is uh, you're protected this way, you're dead this way. So you really have to watch what are the winds doing. Not dead, just uncomfortable. Maybe dead. Yeah, if you get blown <laughs> onto those cliffs, you're dead. So that that's the uh, slight issue with them. But we've been really looking at them. And then that. <laughs> so that we will play by ear. We have hopes. I'm really hoping we can get to the Balearics. Yeah, they're only 200 miles away, or 250 yeah. miles from where we are now. Yeah, and then we could shoot off from the Balearics to Barcelona and see so many cool things. Yeah, it's <laughs> annoying. Um, and Mallorca. Majorca. My, oh, Majorca. Or, or, well, earlier yes. she said Menorca. Yeah, so hey, we, Worcester, we loved Hey, Worcester, you guys are one of the best. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Chappy D. Do I know you? Are you a Worcester person? <laughs> Go Scots! <laughs> I went to college at the College of Worcester, so in that in Ohio, so that you guys have some <laughs> in context to that. She's not just crazy. Yeah, and so, this, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. also in Hufflepuff House. That's important. Go on. He's a Slytherin. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, cool. You lived close to there and your niece went there. That's great. great. That's awesome. Have we? I feel like we've talked. Yeah. yeah. That story <laughs> sounds very familiar. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that is our, how we, you know, plan things. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're not on a whim. Like, we don't just show up like I used to. 
Because I, I literally used to just sail, got tired, dropped anchor, because the bay is shallow. So it's like yeah. anywhere is probably less than 30 feet, and I could anchor there. And then Maddie got on board and... Uh, Texted about uh, your t-shirt. That's right. Yes, because yeah. I was wearing a Worcester shirt. <laughs> yeah. So Maddie, when she joined me and, you know, first time sailing like that, she was throwing up every night. And I'm like, why? <laughs> we're anchored we're not sailing i was having an awful oh, time yeah <clears throat> and thankfully that didn't scare her off from cruising because she still decided to do it oh is anyone else buffering no Aww. i hope that i hope not are we still here <laughs> i think we are i hope so yeah, pull it up on this one <laughs> uh what kind of fids should i get oh okay so everyone's been telling me to get selma fids uh, I've been using Samson Fids for like eight years, and I really like them. <laughs> so, yeah, but everyone's saying I have to get some of Fids. So when we get back to the States, I'm going to give some of Fids a try, because why not? Uh, but, but our Fids have worked yeah. fine. So my, all right, okay. So, but you check them all the time. Yeah, but all right, so this is my gripe with Selma Fids, is they're stainless steel, which is nice. The Samson Fids are aluminum, so mine look pretty... Uh, used uh but when they get kind of gnarly looking you literally just take some sandpaper or something and smooth them out and then they're polished again and then they're really thick aluminum so i use them also when i'm tying stuff as a marlin spike and i'll really put a lot of force on them and they don't bend on me the selma fids are hollow and they're really thin stainless steel and i worry that i might damage them the way i use samson fids so I personally use Samson Fids, but everyone tells me to use Selma Fids. Uh, the, Hopefully that was helpful. <laughs> yeah. The big difference is the Selma Fids have a little hook inside of them. So you put the rope in, the hook holds it for you. Uh, just tape the end of the Selma Fid and it holds it in just fine. So that's my take. <laughs> uh, hence why the Chesapeake Bay is so easy if you go to the anchorages. Yes. 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 <laughs> Yeah, it was puking. We started anchoring in actual anchorages. Yeah, and the Chesapeake and then... Bay is actually really easy. I don't know why. Well, I do know why people say it's really hard. Uh, it's it's actually harder than ocean sailing because there's so much to hit. Yeah. Um, but like if there's a storm, you can't <laughs> heave two for days because you're gonna wash up. Somewhere. Way easier than the ICW though. Yeah, because it's wide. You can actually <laughs> sail it. Well, it's way more fun than the ICW because the ICW is just a a roadway. It's a ditch. Yeah. <clears throat> it is a ditch. <laughs> And you just motor. I mean, you can't... We sailed a lot in the ICW, actually, but, I mean, not nearly as much as we motored because the ICW. Yeah, it was just a long story. Mm -hmm. But other question for you guys. So, this one... Oh, wait. Let's make sure you hit the thumbs up. Uh, yeah, yes, Melinda. Yes, thumbs up, please, if you enjoyed it. I see nine people and only 38 thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Maddie's sassy face. <laughs> now 58. You scared one away. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yay, thanks, guys. <laughs> Just saw the number jump. <laughs> oh, wow. That goes really quickly. Yeah. Cool. It's almost as if we're live. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, our next video that we're going to be putting out before we leave here on Wednesday or Thursday. So, it's going to be really soon. I wish we could kind of space these out more to make them more slow. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we just don't have time. We don't know what the internet situation is going to be going back. So, yeah. who knows? So, our next video is going to be... <laughs> it's <Yes>. true. <laughs> yes. Uh, our next video is going to be about our worst, worst anchorages. anchorages. So, there's going to be some drama. Yep. Get excited, get pumped. And we want to know your worst anchorages. Absolutely. And like like bad <laughs> stories from those anchorages. Oh, I can't wait. Um, oh, wait, wait. And Good. we have had some doozies. So I'm excited to show you these and uh, talk about them. That should be good. Yes. Well, yeah. Bam! So bad <laughs> anchorage. <laughs> That is, that's a preview yeah. of what is to come. That's when there's not enough water at low tide in that <laughs> anchorage or water at all. So we have some mad oh. anchorage stories. Oh, How's, so, how was Austria? Austria is awesome. Oh, thanks for asking. Yeah, Austria is amazing. People are super nice. The food is good. Mm, yeah. We're making schnitzel for dinner tonight. You can't come here by boat, but, it, yeah. you, you know. You can't come here by van. Honestly, like a really cool thing about cruising is going inland uh, to the places yeah. where you visit. Boy, Patrick wisdom says wisdom was resting. resting. Yeah. Right. 
<laughs> that, okay, so while that was a horrible day when the we'll water talk rolled, about okay. it. Okay, don't ruin it. Mm. Mm. Uh, <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Austria, Austria has amazing hikes. We've been taking advantage of all the beautiful countryside and mountains yeah. and um, outdoors, fresh air, the freshest air, so and nice. uh, we've just been totally blessed to be here. Yeah. And we're going to be sad to leave. Yeah, it's right. yeah. But I miss the boat so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So we don't know if we're going to have internet, so we're going to be having... Oh, did you have Did to... we have to give no. up your van? No, the van actually... Is still we, in the parking lot. We couldn't give up the van because there's no place to return it in Austria. So we still have the van. Um, and that's one of the reasons we have mm. to leave uh, as soon as possible because we're still paying for the van. And the van's expensive. The van is not cheap. <laughs> so uh, so buy question. those shirts. <laughs> yeah. So are we going to Greece? The answer is not anymore. We were going to be going to Greece, so, but those plans were foiled. So actually, a little spoiler for you guys, the, you guys that are watching. So the videos that are coming out next week. Nope. The week after next, yes. two weeks away, is when we leave Gibraltar to sail directly 1,000 miles to Sicily. Wait, 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 wait for it, wait for it. You have to wait for it. <laughs> it's still, no, it's getting there. We're going to go 1,000 miles through the Mediterranean to in Sicily the in the winter. Along this route, the little green fishy guys, because I like to use the fishy one, because they're green and cute. So we're going to do that. And then, uh, and then we were going to be able to go to Greece. But things happen that you'll see in the video. Yes. Can't, can't ruin it. Um, things happen which videos. make it so that we cannot go to Greece anymore. Yeah. Uh, but we will be going to Greece someday. Probably not by boat. But probably with kids. Yeah. Greece looks amazing. I was really bummed. But it was because of that that we were able to do this van trip. Mm -hmm. uh, which got us into Austria. Which got us into Austria, which, I mean, I can't imagine being stuck in Greece during COVID. Or Italy. Or we would have been in Italy, guys. Yeah, we would have been in Italy. Right <laughs> yeah, we would have been in Italy, like, People say things happen for a reason, and most of the time I scoff at that because it's a really annoying thing to say. I say it a lot. But, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, thank goodness we didn't make it to Sicily when we did, mm -hmm. is all I have to say about that. Yep. <laughs> um, that so guys, yes. so, tune in next week uh, for... Actually, in a couple days. It's going to be Monday. Is it? It is? Yeah. Not Tuesday? Okay. Real quick, in the comments. Do you guys want Monday or Tuesday? <laughs> we'll wait. <laughs> Try awesome. Alexandria and take the trip to the pyramids. We will be doing that. Yes. Tuesday. Okay, one for Tuesday. Good. So far, Tuesday one, Monday zero. Looks like Tuesday. <laughs> oh, yeah. So oh, that yeah. was the second it's question. It's probably going to be. Time. So we hope that noon. The thing is, we're six hours ahead of you guys. Well, it depends where they are. Oh, that's true. If you're yeah. on the West Coast, we are uh, nine, nine hours, hours ahead of you. Yeah. Um, Tuesday uh, would be fine. Great. So two Tuesdays. All right. So it'll be Tuesday. <laughs> uh, does this same time work for you guys? We know that you guys have work. A lot of you have because work. Because weekday. Um, but it's hard for us to do later because right now, for instance, it's seven o'clock. Um, Any time down yep. East Thunder. Yes. Yeah, so this good. is current time. Yeah. Seven to one. <laughs> so it's really hard for us to go later. And we try to do it during like East Coast lunch break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, okay Estrella. So, Thank you. <laughs> uh, working from home. So anytime is good. Awesome. Okay. So Tuesday at noon for you guys in like the New York time zone area. Yeah. Eastern um, Seaboard. We're really excited about this one, guys. It's going to be so PM much for fun. Us. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> have your stories ready for what has been like your worst anchorage. We're going to read the comments out loud. That way people can yeah. all enjoy the... <laughs> that <laughs> and in an effort to not go another two hours uh okay. we're gonna we're gonna cut this off but guys please um like i said last time please continue to stay safe uh, another keep huge healthy. thank you for to tilo keep healthy keep stay home wear your masks wear your gloves and uh we can't wait to see you on tuesday all right bye <laughs> bye love you all thanks for watching i think it's the x